So usually I can type in speaker sets up, so this is a bit more difficult now. So yeah, um, this is about my nightmares. And my nightmare is bad usage of tools. Um, it's almost Halloween, so I was thinking about doing something in a Halloween scary team. And when I f was doing that, I figured out, hey, back in 2010, Patrick and I did a talk at DevOx in Antwerp, and we already had a bunch of really scary slides. So when I was doing that, I figured out, hey, I can actually reuse about 70 to 90% of those slides for my talk. When we were starting to do DevOps days, it was because this kind of deployments. Friday afternoon, 5 p.m., hey, put this tarball live. Hey, um, we need to get this on production because we have a live television show and it needs to be running. We were like, whoa, what, where? We had no clue where to deploy. We had no clue where to run the databases. We had no clue in user management. And this happened. So that was our life of operations 10 years ago. And then we came, started DevOps days. We started with figuring out that throwing stuff over the wall, breaking the bottle creates a waterfall effect. Um, Patrick and Rudy went on, stay on trip in Cuba to do that. We figured out about camps, we figured out about collaboration, and we started learning. And then came this new hype. Who's using Docker here? Who's proud of it? <laughs> That's my problem. I mean, Docker was a new big thing. Everybody was claiming it. It was, I mean, Docker, 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 Docker. Everybody was talking about it. And you started looking at why people were using it, how, how people are using it. And two, three years later, after the initial birth of Docker, you started seeing Docker being adopted in enterprises. And this is what a typical, I'm not kidding, Docker enterprise container looks like. It's a full VM, there's SSH running in there, there's Oracle running in there, there's WebSphere running in there, and people just use it as a full virtual machine. And then the Dockers die and they reboot, and their whole system is gone. Because we were teaching people to not use different environments. So what we see now, it's not AIX, Linux, and Solaris, now it's Docker. Some other distribution, then production you run on something else. And it's painful. And why did this happen? Because, well, the customer I was dealing with at that time, they went to their IT department and said, I don't want a VM. Here's a form, five weeks, no VMs. The next thing they did is, well, give me one big fat VM and let's deploy the containers in that. And they had their own private cloud because this is typically what a current cloud looks like. There's more private cloud deployments that have failed than actually have been adopted because if you keep putting forms fill in this template before you get a VM, you get that stuff. The other thing we realized is this is how people package software. And well, that was still a painful problem. How do you package software in 2016? Well, this way. That's not something we like. So people started using containers to actually ship a full virtual machine. Well, they call it a container now because it's an easy packaging format, but it's really not something you want to get. We now have distribution spread all over the world again. It's image crawl, which we try to prevent with configuration management. So now these days you get stuff like this. Pretty much nothing changed. Literally, the day after I gave the keynote at Mesos, because I was at a customer and at 10 a.m. in the morning on a Friday, they came, here's a container, can you put this in production? Like, really? How are we gonna monitor this? How are we gonna deploy this? Metrics? Oh, so no, not the container. Here's a Docker file. And the Docker file didn't even build. And this is reality. This is how people today are using this brand new genius technology. And for me, it's basically starting over again. Because six, seven years ago, when we started DevOps Days, it was about collaboration. It was about working together with developers so we could have an infrastructure that could scale out, that was high available, where we could reproduce it, where we could actually leverage the benefits of the cloud and build stuff. And it's all coming back. Now we have the same discussions, only rather than having a tarball, it's a Docker container. And we get security risk, because how many of your containers have you updated? How many kernels have you patched this week? Do you even know which distribution you're running when you got a file which contains four containers? It's one from Alpine, one from 
Ubuntu, one from Pedora, and by the way, the rest of your infrastructure is running on RHEL. So my message to all those Docker people is, folks, it still is about collaboration. It still is about working together, solving a problem for the business, and learning from each other. And no matter what tool you're going to use, whether it's Docker or the next big thing next week, we have to work together in order to solve this problem. Thank you.